with all the news from WTCN-TV's expanded news-gathering facility. WTCN-TV, Channel 11. This is Channel 11 News at 10. a boy who loved all the things young boys do, football and hockey, growing up in the seemingly innocent oasis of a small town. One day, nearly 10 years ago, that innocence was taken away. The boy was last seen wearing a jacket, identical to this one. Well, we've got the river, so we can use that as kind of our, uh, our guide. Southside Riders, that's a lot bigger area. You'll have to do two sweeps. October 22, 1989, was the day Jacob Wetterling was abducted on his way home from a convenience store in rural St. Joseph, Minnesota. No one will forget the images of the massive manhunt that took place in the days and weeks that followed. No one could have imagined that nearly a decade later, Jacob Wetterling still has not come home. That smile. You know, I wonder if he even still has a smile. But it's in those times when I'm, when I'm alone and I, there's no distraction that I really try to reach out and send my, my strength, my energy, my love. And uh, I usually get a sense that it's being received. I still talk to the person who was 11 years old, but I have this, you know, awareness because I've watched all of his friends grow up that uh, he's an adult. I wish I could say, Jacob, no matter what happened or what, what you've been forced to do, um, we love you, we want you home. But I don't know how to get that to him. It's gonna work, you know. <laughs> Thank you. From the beginning, Jacob's parents, Jerry and Patty, have been determined to find a way to get that word out. Along the way, I started going out into communities to talk, to take away some of the fear. I thought these A lot of what I'm doing is, is in education. It's not your fault, and you need to tell somebody. I'm going to tell you something, and this is very important. Are you listening? You and maybe we all need to acknowledge the, the bad things that have happened to kids so that we can provide them with a safer world as world. we can come up with. And then we have to trust that they've got what they need and that this probably won't happen. And you have to go on in life, you know, and, and try and strive for better things. That philosophy was a springboard for a movement that bears Jacob's name a nationally renowned storehouse of information on non-family abductions. The Jacob Wetterling Foundation is an organization of action, an organization of education with a mission, a vision to help us all take responsibility for the safety of children everywhere. He could have been your child. He could be anybody's child. I think the innocence that of the situation, I, I think, is what people caught on to. And I will do whatever I can to help whatever child I hear about, but it would be my dream to prevent this from happening. Launched just four months after Jacob's disappearance, the foundation services Minnesota and the nation, thanks to a boy's face that is forever etched in our memories. And his face has, has grabbed a lot of people in terms of awareness. So we've, we continue to use Jacob's it's called the Jacob Wetterling Foundation because that's what people attach to this issue. They've seen his face, they know his story a little bit. Her gift is her ability to touch the smallest listener or have the ear of the largest office in the country. From depth of tragedy rose the Jacob Wetterling bill in Congress. And over the last several years, the foundation has been a loud, strong voice 
supporting registration of sex offenders in Minnesota. But it's a, it's a good start. This is a way of getting to know your neighbor. Some of our neighbors are not as trustworthy as we would like them to be, and it protects us from those people. In fact, Patty was asked to make an introduction tape that is shown to community notification meetings across the country. Thank you for attending this community notification meeting. We have an opportunity to build a safer community using the knowledge gained here tonight. I would like to take a minute to share with you how this law came to be, its intent, and our role in keeping it a successful tool. While she always speaks from the heart, Patty is not the only delivery vehicle of the Foundation's message. There's a Speakers Bureau, the Hope Newsletter, and the 150,000 bookmarks and safety tip brochures available annually free of charge. More importantly, the Foundation shared its wealth of knowledge in a collective handbook, a Bible of sorts for law enforcement and parents handling cases of missing and abducted children all over the country. It's that kind of authority that gained the attention of U.S. Attorney General Janet Reno. I think the greatest force in all our effort is the children themselves. And Patty, it was so wonderful because I suddenly realized I didn't really know Jacob. And now I leave this meeting today with a greater force than ever before saying, don't give up. And it's Jacob. And it will be other children, some whom come home and some who will not, who motivate us and make us carry on. There are success stories. Some of these kids come home, and every time you hope and pray that this is one that will, will turn up alive. These days, Patty and the Foundation put the handbook and their mission to work, training police officers and investigators nationwide. At workshops like this one in the Twin Cities, and often in the field, the Foundation is at the beck and call of anyone whose child is missing. It's then that Jacob's poster brings attention to the needs of another lost soul. Julie Holmquist was only five years old when Jacob Wetterling vanished, but the two youths now share a terrible connection, and Jacob's mother knows exactly what Julie's mother is feeling. Oh. It's, it is a nightmare. You cling to hope. And Patty the Wetterling Foundation was there to help the Holmquist family all the way to its devastating conclusion with staff, information, and moral support from people who know. There's somebody out there who steals kids. He's got my son. And we have to find these people. Who took Julie? We have to find that every one of us should be on guard and watchful and, and reporting any suspicious comments or suspicious situations. No That's why people like Bill Simpson have become involved in the Wetterling Foundation. I like doing it with people who haven't had a lot of experience because it, it opens up a new world for them. Each year, Bill guides backpacking tours as a foundation fundraiser. Being with people that you really like and then raising money for a worthwhile organization, I think that's, that combination just can't be beat. And there are heavyweights, too, Minnesota Vikings who tipped their caps for Jacob from the start. It really hurts down deep, you know. Just think it was one of your own. You'd be lost one of yours at any time in your life. You know what it's like. And from their inaugural tip-off, the Timberwolves paid tribute to our missing son. And the twins who reached out hand in hand across Minnesota. It's a worthwhile cause that's gaining a voice year after year, from shopping malls to theater groups. And Crossroads Shopping Center were just the right team to make it happen. If an adult tells you to keep a secret forever, do not, I repeat, do not keep a secret. Talk to a girl right away. Know that there are people who love, who love you and care for you. If there is any problem, any kind of problem, you can talk to your parent, a friend, a counselor, a teacher, a, a principal, a police officer, or a family friend. Everybody, Everybody is special, special and no one has a right to hurt you. And the end of a decade brings even more national attention. A front page story in the New York Times and an extensive feature in Minneapolis St. Paul magazine. From one family's call for help nearly 10 years ago, a point of light ignited a call to action to protect our children that continues today. It's not okay to steal from these kids that innocence and to put them into positions of feeling undeserved shame or guilt, like they did something wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. It's, it's to me, it's, it's, um, devastating that that happens ever. So I think that we need to look at um, 
the kids coming forward. I think adults need to listen. listen. Many times we don't want to believe that this person would do that. I think we, we all need to be paying close atten attention to what kids are saying and um, follow it through. Believe them. Out on the plane. There was a boy who at 21 years old is more than a man today. He is a symbol, a beacon of light, a ray of hope for missing children everywhere. Jacob, we are all thinking about you and want you to come home. Dear Jacob, I just want you to know I care about you. Dear Wetterlings, I know Jacob is alive and he's just fine. There's a child all alone in the world tonight. We love you, Jacob. And we cry for his plight, but he's not really gone, because we won't let him go. Jesus.